We're here to discuss education reform. My name is Mitch Weisberg, and we're here at EdChat Interactive. The person who's going to be leading this uh, discussion today is Jeff Borden, who's the Chief Innovation Officer at St. Leo University. I just want to do just a very quick uh, run through of just a couple features. Most of you have been here on EdChat before, and if you haven't, maybe you run, run the one minute video. But uh, let me just expand this a second. Um, you, I know that you've all seen the raise hand right now, um, and then you, if you cursor over your your avatar, you can see that you can. Um, there's an IM button. If you click on the IM button, <clears throat> sorry, if you click on the IM button, that allows you to run a back channel. Uh, I, as the administrator, can't see it, but you all can talk among each other that way. But the um, the the key thing about shindig that we like more than anything else is the ability for you all to do video conferencing with each other and so <clears throat> I'd like you to, to try that right now um, as you know uh, we've uncovered or I should say Jeff and his uh, his crew at uh, st. Leo have uncovered that there are some secret uh, papers from Lev Vygotsky and and John Dewey and Jean Piaget uh, which could have really restructured the whole education system as we know it. Um, so it might be a good idea for you all to just find out what each of you know about that. So I, I'd like to encourage you to click on the avatar of another person. Uh, that will get you into um, uh, into chat mode with that other person. And then introduce yourselves, um, ask why the other person is there, and find out what each of you know about the hidden papers of Lev Vygotsky. So that's what I'd like you to do now. I'm going to stop my broadcast and give you a um, give you a chance now to talk with each other. I see a couple of you are doing that now. And I'll give you two minutes. Great. So I, I think that a lot of you have had a chance to talk with each other and find out uh, where you're from and what you know about Lev Vygotsky and his, and his hidden papers. Um, I just want to introduce uh, next week, we have actually two sessions. On November 3rd, is, it will be um, at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Um, we'll have Russ Qualia and uh, Lisa Land at talking about teacher voice. Uh, they did a survey, I think, of, of about 15,000 teachers about um, what what uh, gives teachers teacher voice, teachers voice and how school systems can change so that teachers really are able to express themselves better. Uh, they're in, incredibly interesting speakers. So that will, that will be a, a very interesting session. And then I also want to say that, that this session tonight is going to continue on Thursday at 9 o'clock and we'll be sending you emails out about where to go on Thursday night. But without much further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Jeff Borden, Chief Innovation Officer from St. Leo, St. Leo University and who is a pretty famous researcher on education reform. So I'm going to stop that right now and let me bring Jeff up. Hi there. Hey Jeff. Hi. So. Um, so uh, I understand that before you were at St. Leo, you were a little bit on the dark side. Uh, you were on the commercial side of education. And uh, you switched to, uh, to, to the good side. Uh, to, to the, what, what, what prompted you? What, what are you doing at St. Leo? Oh, man. We are uh, trying to put together what we call learning design and innovation. And we're trying to create uh, the new, kind of, new generation of, of learning for uh, our students here. And we're doing that in many, many ways through technology, through pedagogical training, through um, basically cultural shifting. Uh, we're trying to work with some things around curriculum and uh, enhancing how teaching takes place in the classroom. We're really focusing on learning. So we've got a lot of irons in the fire here at St. Leo. Wow. 
Okay. So I'm going to pull myself down. You're logged as an administrator, so so you can, as an administrator, bring, you know, you know how to bring other people up to the stage. But if you want me to do something, just say it out loud. I'll be listening to you. Or if you want me to come back up, say, Mitch, can you come back up? Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks I'll come so down and uh, let's lead a great session. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, uh, for your time. I am so excited to be here, and I have got so much stuff to share. Uh, so many exciting things have been happening, uh, both here at St. Leo and just nationally. I, I, and I can't wait to, to, to tell you all. I'm, I'm jumping out of my seat here. Um, some of you may have seen President Obama's recent video uh, that he play, posted on Facebook talking about how only 2% of a student's time should involve testing. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's not, uh, it's not coincidental that that happened just after Secretary Duncan resigned. Um, there is some information that uh, I have to share with you tonight that actually is pertinent to uh, all, all of that, that whole story. In fact, and this is kind of my first real announcement of this, I, I finally have gotten uh, the, the, the go ahead to do so. Uh, I am flying to meet with a presidential hopeful uh, in the next couple of days. Um, and I have the great and distinct honor of being considered uh, possibly to be appointed as the next Secretary for Education uh, in the United States. So uh, I, 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 can't, I can't believe the, the weight of all of that, but man, I'm honored. At the same time, uh, that whole a, a possible appointment has really led to a very bizarre kind of mystery. You know, I, I started talking with some of the candidates not to, uh, gosh, it doesn't feel long ago, I guess it was about a year ago, and I think that my name got out in some various places. I think some people have tweeted about it and some things like that. But as a result, I have gotten this strange uh, set of information that I really wasn't prepared for. Uh, I'm not really a, a conspiracy guy. Uh, you know what? Let, I'll come back to that. I, I want to tell you about the, the mystery itself. I'm kind of all over the place here. So look, growing up, uh, I read Hardy Boys books and Sherlock Holmes mysteries, but I never really imagined that I would participate in the uncovering and unlocking of a mystery like this kind of adventure that I've been on for the last couple of months. So I, without getting too far ahead of myself, uh, let me share my findings with you. You're really the first group of people in the public that I've shared this with. And so I, I want to just go back and start at, at the beginning. Uh, it, it really makes the most sense and contextualizes in my own head. I'm a, I'm a minister's son. Uh, I grew up, spent my entire life going to churches where my dad was preaching, all sorts of different denominations. And um, he eventually, in fact, became a dean of a Bible college, which is probably where I get my proclivities for education. Um, he later went on to be president of Denver Seminary. And he's, uh, he's a great speaker. I, I learned a lot about speaking from him. But, you know, during that time, I can remember messages from my dad and from other Sunday school teachers or whatever about that famous story in John about the woman caught uh, in adultery. Some of you may know that story. You know, the Bible's filled with these stories that um, where people were trying to catch Jesus in these untenable situations, and he was always more clever, one step ahead of the bad guys, right? And this story is a, is a really great example of that. Um, you know, they put Jesus in this predicament. Um, they were going to stone this, this woman who was caught as an adulterer, which was the law of Moses. But um, they went to Jesus to kind of put him in this awkward position because the same law that Jesus said was right or correct uh, they said, well, do you want to forgive her, which is what you've been preaching, or do you want to stone her, which is what the law actually says you should do? And so, you know, Jesus writes in the sand, and he whispers, and he, he says some things, and essentially he says, look, let the first, first person without sin cast the first stone. And, you know, by the time he looks up from writing these things in the sand, there's no one around, just this woman, and he forgives her, and he says, go, sin no more. It's this beautiful, rich story, and it's got all these sort of teachable moments for people like my dad and my Sunday school teachers growing up. It's the kind of hooks that any teacher would, would really kind of want. But I also remember when the research came out showing that that passage was not actually written by by John. It was not written by someone who had seen an account. It had been added by a scribe somewhere along the way. 
uh, at some point, some scribe somewhere basically wrote the words in to this story because they liked it. And uh, then, you know, new versions of it as it was updated just sort of kept going and kept going and kept going. But it wasn't until archaeologists discovered a much older version of that passage that they discovered there was no story of this woman caught in adultery. It didn't exist. It hadn't happened. And so I guess the, the point that I'm trying to make is those great teachings and that great story had all been based on essentially nothing, uh, a, a story, a, a made up uh, narrative at best or a lie at worst. And while it is a beautiful story to be to be sure, it just wasn't something that actually happened with Jesus. Now that didn't make it any less appealing. It didn't make it any less compelling. But uh, that story was something that we all was were led to believe was true. My father was really frustrated when the information came out that it was not a story to to uh, be considered as true or val valid. And many biblical scholars, I think, were equally frustrated. But eventually, Bible started putting that story in brackets and, uh, and noting some of the history. So the reason I tell you that is because today I have an equally disturbing and problematic story to, uh, to, to speak to. See, today I want to talk to you about something that has proven to be a mystery of sorts. In fact, it's not even necessarily a mystery I fully understood uh, until recently, and I'm still trying to, to get my, my head around it. What I'm about to share with you, it's going to sound like a conspiracy, and I, I just have to try to convince you uh, I'm not that guy. I'm, I'm not nuts. I, I can talk about who killed JFK or Marilyn Monroe if you want to, or maybe I could even, even have a conversation about Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster if you wanted to, but it's not important. That stuff's not important to me. I, I don't care about those sorts of things. They're not, they're not important to me because they don't matter in my life. They may be fun, but they're not really important. Well, I want to talk to you about something that it is, it is important. It's a conspiracy that we have been dealing with for a while, and we don't necessarily uh, even know it. Uh, I'm going to ask if Mitch would do me a favor. Would you bring uh, Greg Kunzweiler up? Greg, you may want to raise your hand so Mitch knows which which tab is yours there. Um, Greg is my research associate, and he and I have been working on this for, oh gosh, I, I brought Greg in um, a few months back, and he helped me uncover, he helped me dig, he helped me research and, and do all kinds of, of really good stuff. But let me tell you kind of what got us going. I shared with Greg um, a letter and I had gotten this letter uh, from someone who, unfortunately, I, I can't really disclose. And at, at the heart of this letter, this is really what started the whole mystery and the, the, the problem. This, this letter here suggests cover-up and the enforcement of ideologies that are not beneficial to educators today. Uh, and it goes on and on. And I'm, I'm going to share it with you here as we go. And it goes actually back to the likes of social engineers that that started education right greg like um horace mann and uh elwood coverley um it ties back to like rockefeller and woodrow wilson uh and some unlikely pairings that you've already heard mitch kind of mention uh dewey and uh Vygotsky, and we whoa 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 my sorry my the power here at this at my office just went out Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's that's really bizarre. I'm so, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. My power is just freaking out here. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on. Um, sorry, sorry. Uh, anyway, as uh, what is that? Cease and desist. What is cease and desist? Um, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Somebody, somebody's in here. I'm on a conference call. I'm really sorry, everybody. I, I don't know what's happening. Are you seeing cease and desist go across the screen? What? Oh, I am so sorry. This is nuts. There. Just a second. Just a second. I'm gonna just get rid of these. People. Sorry. Give me. Give me one sec. Give me one sec. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. Okay. This. This is far more real than I thought it was. Um. I. I know the guy out at the door, and I'm not gonna open it for him. He's got a badge. That's not a real badge. He's not FBI. He's not Homeland Security. Um, I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know what, I'm going to go, um, Greg, 
let me leave it to you. Here's what I need you to do, Greg. Tell them what we found. Show them what we found, Greg. Show them the stuff, and I will. Um, I'll get back in here as soon as I possibly can. I am so sorry. This is. I gotta go. Good luck. I'll be back in a minute. Jeff, Jeff, what happened? Jeff, are you okay? Jeff. Oh, this is heavy. You know, he told me last week that there was somebody following him, and honestly, I didn't believe him. I thought he was a little bit crazy, but now I'm really starting to believe it. You know, a few months ago, there was an insider that came and brought him some information, and one of those pieces of information was the paper that he was showing you, and you would not believe the authors of this paper. And when you would hear their names, you would definitely know who they were. But a few months ago, uh, when they brought this information, we started digging deeper. We still have holes that are missing, but we got a lot of clues and a lot of information in there. Hold on just a second. I think this is Jeff. Hold on. This is Jeff. This is Jeff. Hold on. Jeff, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Jeff? Great. Can you hear me? I don't know. Okay, good. Okay, there we go. Look, um, you want me to put you on? All right. Yeah, you know what? Uh, put, put me on so everyone can, can see me and hear me if you can. Just uh, put, your, put your screen up like to the computer. I think everyone, can everyone hear him? Okay. Can everybody hear him? Stop me from telling you what, what you need to hear tonight. This is going to make. I've thought about this. It's, it's such a shame that this happened. All right. This is a shame that this happened. Remember that. I, I'm really I'm really sorry that this this, this happened with our session. But um, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna ask Greg to put up the virtual Greg. Put up a. Put up the URL of the board of the uh, 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 We're uh, having the past uh, there. Not this uh, information is so important. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to try to turn out on a riddle before anyone else does. Whoever's listening to this, hopefully, they um, they won't know how to get it in here. A lot of riddle to do uh, with the past to the board that shows the password is a word used in all empiricism. The past Okay, you that's the rule for the answer. This is the marker how you perceive housing some of this information. No. I'll get back on this board over time. I've got to make my way up to uh, wash. Don't don't worry. And then eventually, I'm gonna I'm gonna fly out. I'm gonna meet with. I think will be able to help me get a lot of this straightened out because somebody is definitely moving this information. And we'll be so. I'll yeah. keep going to the board. Go to that board that we put right there after you find out, Greg. Don't give them the password, man. You guys have got to figure it out yourselves, and then don't write it down. Don't send it to anybody. Just, you know, get in there in ways that, that keep it so that no one can know what we're doing. I will, will be back for the Thursday session, I promise. But remember, remember you thank you. Greg, uh, in order to remove this shame from it. Oh, looks like we just lost him. Oh, he's in really big trouble. But okay, everyone. So, so, yeah, Greg, so that this is a little uh, irregular. What just happened? No. You know what? He t I told you. He told me last week that somebody has been following him. And uh -huh. honestly, I didn't believe him at all. 
Um, but the stuff that we've been digging up and with the insider that he got with the, some of the information and especially that paper, there's a big reason why. And this is because of what education these people are trying to do to our kids and the ideologies they're trying to feed them. It's just, it's terrible. So what we need to do as a group is really try to help him out in solving these clues. So we think that they're tapped into the audio. But I can show you guys on the screen the board. And so let me look on the board, and I'm going to show you that right now. So what I want you all to do is go ahead and jot this URL down really quickly. So jot this down or take a picture of it or something so you guys can have this to go to. And then I'm going to give you guys the clue again so you can make sure you can follow it. And what y'all are going to do is break up into groups so you can help each other find out what the password is. But please don't use the audio to be able to share that password out so nobody else can grab it. So here's the URL. Let me reread the, the, the riddle again that he gave. Yeah, that sound didn't come through when he gave the riddle. So I don't, I don't know that everybody was able to hear it. Okay, so let me make sure I read this again. So we should act now or it would be a shame not to help so this was an old the password is an old word used in empirical theories of learning and the one selected for the password to the board is a plural form of this word okay so it's an old word in empirical theories of learning and the one selected for the password is the plural form plural form of this word it's a word that describes how one perceives the world around them and the process of information. So that was the that was the riddle. And I want to make sure you guys break up into groups and hopefully can work together to solve this riddle. I'm going to go check on his family to make sure they're OK and I want to get them to a safe spot. And then we'll definitely be checking back. I know Jeff's going to be jumping on to that board and that's our research board where we've been throwing up all this information on there. And so from there, you all can go ahead and start finding the clues and finding the information that Jeff and I have dug up. So, so you're, going to be, you're going to be back in about five minutes. So right now, what you'd like people to do is to click on one or two other people's icons, right? And yeah. kind of try to decipher what this means without, without coming up on stage, correct? Yes. So I'm going to go, I need to go try to find his family. Okay. All right. So I'll stop your broadcast. Um, and, oh, and I'll bring you back down and then just raise your hand when you come back up. Okay. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, okay. Guys. All right. So this is, as, as I mentioned before, this is a little bit irregular for an interactive because we've never had a person kind of leave in the middle of a broadcast before. But I guess we're stuck in the middle of this mystery. Um, I'd like to encourage, I see a number of you are doing that already, uh, click on another person's icon. And let's try to figure out what this riddle is. It was act now or it would be a shame not to happen. Um, and then, um, and there was that, that URL, which uh, I, I've, I've, asked, I've been asked not to verbalize, but hopefully some of you have written it down, uh, which requires a password. So uh, at this point, um, I'm gonna come down. Also, I'll just put down, I'll just put up the, that first slide from the, from the beginning and um, I'll, I'll, I'll come back up in another minute or two. And I'm going to float from, from person to person also. So what I think I might do is let me, I, I, I see um, a couple people here. Maybe I can pull somebody up. And uh, here's, here's a person. Let's, let, me, let me pull him up. Hey Chris, hello. Welcome to EdChat Interactive. So, um, so did you did you understand those? Uh, you know that that riddle. Did you? What were you able um, to figure out? I heard him mention Vygotsky, and right by the time he mentioned that, the lights started flickering. Um, uh huh. I'm not sure I got all the parts of the riddle. Um, something about empirical forms of learning, and 
uh, the way that someone perceives a, the world around them to make meaning. Is that what I understood? Uh -huh. Right. Yes. So, and it's, and it, he, he said something about an old term also. That a term that isn't used as much anymore. Yeah, there you have so, me stuck. Cause I, I, I was just thinking like cognition or sociocultural learning, um, but I'm not sure what this old term. Was. What do you, so what I was do you able to, to get into. I was able to get to the site, but it just says, uh, you know, I have a password, and of course, without knowing the password, I can't see the information. Um, and then how so do I, wonder, I reach the site? So. Um, he he put up a, a, a sign before. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see. I'm gonna I'm gonna write it down. Okay, and then I'm gonna put it back up. Also, there's probably a better way of doing this. Oh, now of course my pen. I think. Um, You're not gonna disappear, so. Too, are you? No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna disappear. Somebody's raising their hand, so I think. Um, oh, there's Greg again. You know something? I'm gonna uh, bring you down. And I'm gonna bring Greg up. Okay. Okay. All right. One second. Hey, Greg. Uh, you know, I was writing down the URL for for people to see, and uh, of course, my pen ran out of ink. But you could probably display it again. What did you find out? Absolutely. I. I well, thanks. Thanks for bringing me. Can you? Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks for bringing me back up. I actually went and checked on his family, and they're okay. I'm going to make sure they get somewhere safe. But I have just heard you guys make sure. I'm going to put the URL back up, and so you guys can hopefully write that down real quick. And then I'll be here for a few more minutes to be able to help you all before I have to go with his family uh, real quick. But hopefully we want everyone to away with this password ready to log in and see our research information. So here's the, the URL again. Hopefully everybody can read that. We'll go ahead and that down. It's actually a shortened version of it. And so what you want to do, once you go to this website, go ahead and save it, bookmark it, and then you can actually go right back to it uh, each time during the week because we're wanting everybody to be checking this board as often as you can over the next four days. So that's the URL. So has anybody figured out what the what the password is? Remember, this is let me I'll say the the riddle again. So we should act ACT now, or it would be a shame, S-H-M-E, not to help. It's an old word used in empirical theories of learning. And this word is actually the one we picked for the password is a plural form of that word. So it's an old word that was used, and that was actually used by Vygotsky and I believe Piaget. And so this is a word that describes how one perceives the world around them and processes information. So it's a word that describes how one perceives the world around them and processes information. So hopefully that so, can help. Everybody. So you know, it's it. You know, I wasn't really aware of the word, but I'm wondering. There were two syllables that were really two words that were really emphasized. I wonder if those two words could possibly be some type of an anagram. So I wonder maybe maybe somebody can figure that out. Hmm. So and you know if uh, if people figure it out maybe put it into, would it be okay if they put it into the IM so other people could see it? That way it wouldn't be verbalized. Yeah, I believe so. I, I'm looking at everybody's face, and everybody looks like an educator to me, and not one of these crazy people that are chasing Jeff down. Because he uh -huh. told me they look like kind of rough characters that are chasing him down. So if somebody has it, um, yeah, maybe just raise your hand, 
um, we're, you know, we'll, and they'll, maybe you can explain to everybody else how to figure it out uh, without actually saying the word. Aha, uh -huh. we have a, uh, we have a question here that I'll explain. So yes, I think people. Yeah, my my question is: Is there any way that maybe th maybe those two words um, are are some type of an anagram that we could just combine the letters of those words and it becomes the word that's the password? Yes, yes, they are. Aha! Uh -huh. Now, have you seen this um, this web page before? Have you been working with him? With Jeff on it? Yeah, I've been helping him collect some of the information. And so I know he's going to be also adding some more information as well this week. Uh, is there any, can you describe some, oh, there's some, somebody, there's another question. Aha, uh -huh, maybe somebody has it. Aha. Right. Um, uh -huh. Well, we could try that. Um, let's see. Here's one. There's one, so act shame. Somebody could try using that as the password on the site and see if that works. I'm going to publish it again, what, what Amanda put up. But that would be a, um, a term that's used a lot in, ed in education, or it shouldn't no. be anyhow. We, we yeah. try not to uh, shame the students too often. Maybe, yeah. maybe every once in a while. So let me read part of it again. It said the old word, it's an old word used in empirical theories of learning. And this is the plural form of it, the word that he picked for the password. And it also describes how one perceives the world around them and processes information. Dune, 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 dune. <laughs> Except, you know, I, that's probably violates a copyright by uh, by humming it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you guys can group up too and try to find another person to talk through it a little bit. Aha! Uh -huh. There's there's one big group there of like four or five people. I see. Oh, there you go. Yep, we got to work together. Yeah. Trying to find. He's just, he's convinced that they're tapped into our audio feed right now, uh -huh. and we don't want to have, we don't, otherwise I would just say it. Ah, somebody just raised their hand. Uh, Claudia. So I'm going to bring myself down, and I'll bring her up. All right, perfect. There you go. Does everybody got that? That's the, that's the password. And so let me show you guys one more time the URL. So go to the URL and type in that password. During the week, Jeff is going to put up more information. There's already some information in there that him and I have put up, and he's going to continue to add to that information there. So please, every single day, make sure you check. Check this board. This is our research board that has all the information. Thank you, Claudia, so much. You guys are awesome. So, do we have a Google Doc or anything for people to share information? Is you know how, how if people um, if people wanted to like work collaboratively on this, is there a is there a place where they could do that? It's on the board. Oh, it's on, on the board. board. Yeah, that's pretty much where we're going to drive everything on the board. Okay, so we can all post to the board. We're uh, we're still working on that. We're going to try okay. that. Okay. All right. So then I, I guess we, our job is to then go to this board, start reading through this, start posting to the board. I see there's a couple questions. Also. Um, let me bring, let me see what these questions are. One second. I have to, uh, there's, um, please say the URL. Thank you. Ah, uh, but we can't say the URL. Can they see it? Can you ask them um, if they 
Can they not so see my webcam? So Susan asked if um, if we could see the URL. So I'm hoping that at this point, um, oh, she can't see it. Uh, actually, so so if uh, if if you could post the see the URL as a question, then I can broadcast it as a question. Oh, there there was it actually somebody did post it. Sorry, um, here it is. You know something. <laughs> There's the URL. Yes, perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Recording, for helping. Okay. All right, does anybody got the information? They have the, the, the board. Hopefully, you guys have been able to go to that board. And then, hopefully, everyone, does everyone have the password to be able to get on? And maybe you can go ahead and log on real quick and make sure it works. So the URL should work to get you to the board, and then there should be a password to be able to a space for the password. And the password is what Claudia had po uh, posted. Does anybody have any trouble there? I want to make sure before we log off right. that everybody's good to go. So yes, yeah, so raise your hand. Uh, I guess there's a few more questions still. Um, let me go back to the questions. Uh, right. So there's there's the URL. Um, hopefully, everybody at this point has been able to see the URL. 